All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. Uh, this is the uh, 31st day of August in the year of our Lord, 2023. So I'm a bit conjected, congested, conjected. I think I'm conflating words there. Conjected. Uh, congested. I mean, it could be another round of COVID, but more likely it's because of the super abundance of corn flour. Of corn, oh, man, I can't talk. Corn pollen present in this area. Oh, it just covers everything. Uh, the cornfields, uh, the pollen, and, and uh, of course there's pollen from other sources too right now, but it is just super abundant. And it seems to happen every year. It's like a bit of a headache, congested headache, you know, the little back in the throat. Same symptoms as the, as, uh, um, what's the, uh, coronavirus, uh, the current thing, uh, Omicron. Uh, why is the Biden in, uh, administration, administration asking for uh, $1.2 billion from Congress to roll out another round of vaccination? When there is no evidence that the newest variant, which is the BA-12 or something, 28, uh, is not really a threat, and nobody seems to think it's a threat, and there's no evidence it's a threat. I would refer you to uh, Dr. John Campbell, a British physician. I think he also does teaching or something. Anyway, part of the British health system. Uh, let's see here. Okay, this is uh, his YouTube channel, Dr. John Campbell. Campbell teaching. Uh, he's been dealing with the coronavirus uh, pandemic since its beginning. Originally and for a long time, before there was, uh, you know, from the beginning when we didn't know what it was and everything else, trying to provide useful and helpful information. Uh, back when there was no other treatments, talking about vitamin D and other things that might be helpful. Uh, uh, simply looking at trying to boost our immune systems that God-given immune system. I don't know if he's a Christian, but he simply, he does love the truth, which might be a positive sign. Well, that's always a positive sign, because if you don't love the truth, you can't be saved. But uh, he has been going along, and he had sort of an epiphany of sorts uh, when he realized he was being lied to by the medical establishment. So he has... Uh, is, is looking at things from a skeptical point of view now. And he mentioned the latest variant. And I used to follow him when the pandemic was a, a threat, follow him pretty regularly to see what he had to say. And I'm not a medical expert. I've read my wife's nursing uh, books from when she went to nursing school. And I educated myself a bit when my dad was having serious health issues. He's now passed away. Um, uh, I had never taken biology. I was, you know, into engineering, into computers, into electronics, into physics, that kind of stuff. Uh, that kind of science. Uh, the, the biological stuff didn't particularly interest me. So when he was sick, though, I, I, I thought, well, I need to understand some of this stuff because the, what the doctors are doing just doesn't make sense to me. So I studied the human biology uh human physiology, got, bought some college-level textbooks, read through them quickly, and say, oh, yeah, this." And with an engineering background, I was absolutely amazed, not at the books, but at what God created. I had, had a new appreciation, just wondered at the amazing work God has done 
in what he's created, especially living things. There is more revelation of God's deity in a drop of pond water than there is in the entire universe out there. Because that's all dead. There is absolutely no evidence of extraterrestrial life, physical life out there. None. They have no evidence at all. They, they wishful thinking. Hopium. They, they've been smoking hopium. They spent who knows how many years, decades, uh, uh, with the SETI project, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, the big radio telescope that has now disintegrated into a pile of chunk in Puerto Rico, the world's largest at that time. Uh, <clears throat> found nothing. But they keep trying, and they keep finding nothing. Because Earth is really the center of God's creation, even if it's not the physical center. But uh, there is nothing in the Bible inconsistent with truth and with the facts of what God has created. It's just the interpretation of the evidence he has given. And people that are fallen away from God are by nature hostile to, toward God, which is all the children of Adam. Uh, we All of us are born into this. Uh, want to suppress the truth and want to get God out of our minds because there's that hostility, that the fear of, of judgment. If God exists, we're in trouble because we're sinners. Well, God provided a solution for that in Jesus Christ, but people just want to stay as far from God as they can often, going back to the Garden of Eden, where Adam and, Ed, uh, and Eve heard God walking in the garden after they sinned, and they hid themselves. First thing they realized is they're naked. That wasn't a problem. God didn't give them clothes. But suddenly they felt naked, felt exposed to the sight of God. Yep. We've all experienced this, haven't we, in one way or another? We want to hide. We want to hide our sinful deeds. We don't want to be seen. We want to cover it up. And that's what they did with fig leaves. It's not sufficient. Um, and then when they heard the sound of God walking in the garden, now God can walk with us. I walk with God. I mean, I, I took a walk the last couple of days I've been out. I had to get back and spend some time alone with God. And far away from human beings as possible. <laughs> and what man has done, I could get away uh, as Jesus did, you know, he, he'd go up away from his, his apostles, disciples, up on the mountain and, and pray. I didn't spend all night. Uh, but it, it is, when I want to speak with God, it's, it's I, I want to speak with him. I don't want other people to hear what I'm saying. I don't want to pray with other people. I, it's, it's, we have a personal relationship. And people have said, you can't walk with God. Of course I can. He's in me. How can you not walk with God? If you're born again, the, God dwells in you. You're his temple. How can you not go for a walk with God? He's going with you. Can't help, can't help it. But being conscious of that fact and deliberately doing it, it's like, it's the same as going into your quote-unquote prayer closet. It's, it's, that's what Jesus said. Go get away with God alone. And that's what it is. But of course, because I'm a born-again Christian, and I know Christ dwells in me, the Spirit of God is in me, I know it, then, of course, it's just natural to have a conversation with him. And he doesn't speak verbally, but God, I know he, when, when I'm praying properly in spirit and truth, I know he hears me, and and there is a two-way conversation going on of sorts. God doesn't need to use language. Language is so imperfect. But what I want to talk about today is why do we see such strange, thing, strange things going on in the world that are contrary to normal rationality and even self-interest? which the whole world runs on. If you're, if you're not born again, all you have is self-interest. So why do, I mean, I'm not talking about individuals that do irrational, destructive 
things, uh, destructive of themselves. You know, the, the, the crazy, weird things that happen in the world, although this is certainly applicable to that. But why would systems of government and systems of corporate powers engage in self-destructive, irrational behavior that's contrary to their own interests? For example, governments, their interest is supposed to be directed toward their own people, to the welfare of their people. To the, they, they should be maintained in power by the consent of the people uh, because the government functions well and justly and in the interest of the people. If you want to stay in power, that's a good way to do it. That's a God-given way to do it. That is uh, consistent with the purpose of God, that, that, that the government would do things like uh, punishing evil and rewarding good. That's rational. If you want society to continue, that's the only rational course. Whether or not it's particularly Christian, that is still, you know, God ordained the principle of government for sinful humanity uh, in order to to impede the uh, the the rush toward destruction. So, what when government acts contrary to its own self-interest when democracies or republics or whatever act contrary to the interest of the voters. That's irrational behavior. That's contrary to their own personal interest of being reelected. It's irrational behavior. Why would they do that? Why would they as a body do things like this? Why does the, the president, the administration, and the Congress, why have they sent over $100 billion to a lawless, neo-Nazi, genocidal regime that they installed like 10 years ago in Ukraine. Why? Now, now uh, why do they do that? Why is the Biden administration, why is Joe Biden asking Congress for another $1.2 billion dollars which is a pittance compared to what they've been throwing away in other places. In the, now, now, like Ukraine, this is just furthering manifest evil. It's furthering uh, murder. They've Biden just recently authorized a shipment of cluster munitions, uh, 155 millimeter howitzer cluster shells. The excuse being they've run out of the other ones, which they have because they've been so. The United States has has empty, emptied its defense cupboard given everything to Ukraine. Europe is totally has totally demilitarized itself. They've sent everything over there. They don't have enough to protect themselves for more than like three days. But Russia has no intention of invading. That's So it's totally contrary. Why would you do that? Why would you, what interest is that of the United States in promoting a, a wicked government in Ukraine that is genocidal? that is following the ideology of Adolf Hitler and company. Why? Giving them over $100 billion, about half of that in arms. Why are you arming them? I mean, this, this is not simply a rogue element. Uh, it's not simply Biden. This is the entire Congress acting together, Democrats and Republicans, the vast majority of both parties together, support this irrational, wicked act. N knowing full well that Ukraine, their preferred targets for artillery, which they don't have any air power, and, and other things, drones, whatever, are civilians. They don't shoot generally at military targets. They prefer to shoot at civilians cities where there's no military around. And they've been doing this for over 10 years. Shelling the city, for example, of Donetsk. And now, of course, despite assurances that they would not use these cluster munitions against civilians, which they are most effective against. They're not def effective against uh, defensive military targets because people in trenches, bunkers, uh, armored vehicles. They're only defensive against soft targets. Troops out in the open, that's all. 
uh, but against civilians. And the reason cluster munitions are banned by the vast majority of the countries of this world is because a substantial percentage of them does not explode on impact, but rather is just left laying around waiting for some hapless civilian or child to pick it up, and then it will explode and kill or maim them. That's why most countries, the United States not included, and Russia not included too, has uh, banned them. Why would they send those weapons to Ukraine uh, knowing what Ukraine would actually use them for, which indeed they have? They have used cluster munitions supplied by the United States to strike at civilian cities where there are no military targets. That's the typical modus operandi of the uh, Kiev uh, regime. So why would the United States do that? Why would Congress do that? This is American money. These are uh, American weapons that are supposed to be used defensively. There's a real problem there. The Department of Defense isn't about defense. But why are they acting irrationally? This is no, this is no, no rational motivation as far as even personal interest of being reelected. This is irrational. Uh, why are they rolling out this? Why does Biden want to roll out another round of uh, uh, pokes to uh, um, for a variant of the virus, of the Omicron virus? I think it's a BA28 variant. Uh, go to J Dr. Campbell's um, website, and he's got plenty of videos on this. Now, apparently, the, the British, the UK is in a panic over this, too. And he's asking the question, why are they all panicked about this? There's, there's no rational reason to believe that this variant is going to be a danger. Or that it'll be even more infective than Omicron. Which turned out to be a blessing from God, because it was like God's version of the vaccine that actually works. It provides a broad spectrum immunity and would not likely to have autoimmune uh, side effects. If you had a conventional uh, vaccine for this uh, uh, Omicron, or the, the, uh, the coronavirus, that uh, used a uh, large fraction, at least, of the virus to target rather than simply the, the spike protein, which your body makes, it's, it's, a, it's a imitation of what your body naturally produces to regulate your circulatory system. It uh, um, enters through the ACE2 receptor. You know, you've heard of uh, ACE2 inhibitors for blood pressure, uh, how the doctors short circuit your body's system to lower your blood pressure. I think that's a really bad idea, but they do it. I mean, pharmaceutical medications are... Uh, people, ignorant people tinkering with things they don't understand, my opinion. I stay as far away from that stuff as possible. Uh, I know how to regulate my blood pressure. It's called exercise and diet. It's just that people want a quick fix. And they're motivated by fear. And they worship at the altar of pharmacology, science, so-called. But, uh, yeah, uh, Dr. John Campbell uh, on YouTube has been uh, asking questions since his epiphany. Okay, so, but beyond the, 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 uh, the poke, the next round of pokes, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. In order to visit my mother, I did submit to the one-shot wonder. Fool me once, shame on you. Uh, 
Okay, so beyond that, so why why are they doing this? There is no rational reason for the United States and now UK and others to panic over this variant, according to John Campbell, and I agree with him. I agree with him. Not a medical expert, just have some knowledge of how things basically work, you know? It's not difficult to figure out some of these stuff. You don't need a, a huge amount of knowledge. In fact, sometimes it's easier to see the forest if you're not focused on all the individual trees. Too much knowledge sometimes blinds you to the bigger picture. Uh, you get lost in it, lost in the trees. So, yeah, what, why, why is when there's no, zero evidence so far uh, that this is a a real danger, any more of a danger than the current uh, Omicron strain, and uh, perhaps reason to believe it'll even be less of a danger and less able to replicate itself and less able to function because there's been like 33 mutations in the proteins of the uh, of the spike protein, in the protein of the spike protein. Well, it's a protein complex. Uh, so in other words, it's like a key that doesn't fit as well as the previous one. You ever get a new key made and it doesn't work because it doesn't, it's not quite the right shape, so it can't open the lock? Well, that's what this is. This is God's engineering. The, the uh, messenger proteins in our hormonal system, we have a nervous system where it's an electrical communication, more like point to point. And a broadcast system, which is chemically based, your uh, adrenaline and uh, all the, the hormones that regulate things, uh, testosterone, estrogen, all this hormone families, they're a broadcast system that your bodies, the cells, uh, or families of cells, have receptors to receive that communication. And the uh, viruses, in general, uh, mimic the key they make a copy of the, the copy of the key to unlock the cell to allow themselves the, the the virus to be in, to insert its uh dna or rna and replicate itself so it hijacks your cell's machinery to reproduce itself and usually destroys the cell in the process that's what happens okay so uh, it, but there's there's no reason to believe that this new variant even is potentially has any 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 common sense reason to assume that this is going to be a dangerous variant. I, uh, listen to what uh, Dr. Campbell says about this. Uh, he's pretty common sense medical, and it's like yeah, that makes sense to me. So why? Why would uh, not only the United States, assuming that, that Congress is almost certain to go along with this, uh, might be a few holdouts like Rand Paul, but uh, not many. Why will they go along with this? Just like why did they go along with sending cluster munitions? Congress could say, no, you can't do that. Uh, we're not going to give you the money. Why do they keep giving money to this this wicked, wicked government in Ukraine that the United States put in in 2014 assisted a coup. Newland, Ms. Newland was there handing out cookies in 2014, along with John McCain, cheering it on. Why? What was their motivation? The good of Ukraine? Of course not. They have killed. They have re their acts. American acts have resulted in the death of probably. Uh, currently, at least a half a million Ukrainians. Reliable numbers of just killed on the front line are right around 400,000 and climbing rapidly. This current offensive that the United States has pushed forward so so hard, along with NATO, the rest of the, the vassal states of NATO. Um, has resulted in the in the death of over forty thousand. I mean, these are the the Russia. The Russia tends to report those that have actual bodies to count. 
you know, not not uh, fictitious numbers. They're, Russia is pretty accurate, considering they're going in a uh, Christian direction. Makes true. Uh, I think they had seventy years of lies. I think they they're they're uh, they realize that's not the way to go, and President Putin is definitely pushing Russia in a more Christian direction, including recently, very recently signing a bill to outlaw the mutila sexual mutilation of children. You know what I'm talking about. And chemical mutilation. And they're profaning marriage. What used to be common sense in the United States. See, it, it was only a few years ago that doctors that did what's going on today with children would be imprisoned. Imprisoned. How rapidly we're tumbling into the abyss, into the darkness. Except for his people. We're just watching this and saying, yikes. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. This place, the lights have gone out. Yes. So uh, what's going on? Why do corporations, well, we have a good example, corporations. Uh, I mean, in the past, we've had Gillette and others who, when a corporation, uh, the, the, prince, the legal obligation of a corporation, a for-profit corporation, is to make profit for the shareholders of that corporation. That's their fiduciary. That's the, the, the trust relationship with the shareholders, that you work to make money uh, uh, for a return on their investment. That's their responsibility, their legal responsibility. So why would corporations act contrary to their legal responsibility to their shareholders and, and do things that, are, that will offend their customer base and cause their shareholders to lose money? I mean, that would be a, I mean, you, they could be brought uh, to court for that. Prosecuted for that. At least sued for it. Why? See, cor these corporations have a, a corporate charter from the federal government, so. And they can't uh, uh, act contrary to the laws of the uh, country, uh, supposedly. So why would they do something so irrational? A good, le recent example, a very good example, is Bud Light, which is a, a brand of Anheuser-Busch. And it has taken such a huge tumble, it's pretty obvious the country, many of the people in this country are fed up with this. I saw a short video. Apparently, Bud Light, they put a booth up out in, uh, what's that, uh, Sturgis, Sturgis in was it South Dakota, the big motorcycle event out there, the, especially Harley event. And uh, they out there they had a, a Bud Light, a big Bud Light uh, pavilion, um, totally empty. <laughs> Nobody will buy anything. Nobody will touch anything. They would be ashamed. It's it's a reproach. It would be a reproach and a, a object of ridicule to be seen carrying a Bud Light or wearing a Bud T-shirt. But the corporation did this to themselves. F offended their customer base. That is, that's malfeasance. That's cor corporate malfeasance. That's a, that is a, a, a breach of trust with your shareholders, too. Not just your customers, but your shareholders, because their their the stock value tumbled, their profits went in the toilet, and will probably never recover. They have permanently damaged themselves. Why? This is irrational. This is this is you know this is not like greedy corporations. This is like corporations shooting themselves in the head and the car the, the, and everybody's say uh, you know destroying your customer attacking your customers it's like Gillette did with their with their men are all slobs commercial um, it didn't go over well 
and this is even, you know, this is really a good example. Why would they do that? Why would Google and YouTube censor the content of the people that use their services? Not censoring pornography and, and overt uh, calls to violence and things like that, but censor open discussion, rational discussion about what's going on. The notorious blue banner that directs you to reliable sources, even if they don't ban you, like you'll find the, the infamous blue banner on many of uh, Dr. John Campbell's videos, which means you might want to look at it. It's like the blue banner of look at it now because uh, YouTube doesn't like it. Uh, and it's a uh, uh, dis disagreeing with the CDC I guess is a is a, uh, a a fatal crime on YouTube or disagreeing with who remember Dr. Who disagreeing with Dr. Who <sighs> lethal oh, so you can't question you cannot question these corrupted author systems of authority who are in the pocket of who knows who well, I'm going to show you who pocket, whose pocket they're really in. Because when corporations act contrary to their own interests and their own duties, and governments act contrary to their own to the interest of their own countries, their own people, and their own re-election or staying in power. Because in Africa, we've seen a rash, a new one just the other day. Uh, which one is this? Uh, not Niger. That's one. And this, they have another one now. Um, can't think of the name of it. That that just the the military toppled the the uh, corrupt democratically elected president president and a son the father and son have been in power for fifty four years, and uh, the military finally said you know that, you know why you see Russian flags at these events. It's not because the Russians are involved at all. Russia has become a symbol of resistance against the world order and the United States. Because the United States, since the fall of the Soviet Union, no counterbalance, the, the on restraint has become a center of evil in the world, promoting evil around the world, like the, the sexual revolutions, trying to force it down the throats in Africa of countries using the, the big stick against them, threatening them with sanctions and loss of aid and outright uh, overthrowing their governments if they don't uh, conform to the, uh, the new Western ethic. The, the alphabet soup ethic. The ABCs of perversion that are, and we'll see this, that why is this being pushed forward? Because of the person that's really in charge. His agenda, which is not irrational. And let's go to that now. Let me take down that. Let's go over to the scriptures. And uh, please read the full context. There's so much in the context of these particular scriptures that uh, I, I just want to read it all, but I don't have time right now. I want to keep this fairly short. First of all, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Um, let me see here. Starting at verse 1. Got to start someplace that makes sense. And you, he's writing to the church at Ephesus, that those who are in Christ. And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Yep, that's where we all were. And those who aren't born again are still there. Those that don't have real faith in Christ are still there. Dead in trespasses and sins, cut off from God. In which... You once walked according to the course of this world. Uh, this is a little funky translation here. Uh, it, it does get the gist of it, but it's li li literally the the uh, 
the the ordering of this age, the, this period of time, the arrangement of this time, yep, the time since the fall up until now, which will be ending soon. The end of this age is rapidly approaching. The signs that Jesus gave are being fulfilled before our very eyes. The explosion of lawlessness and growing coldness and apostasy among those who call themselves Christians. The number of nuns, no religion in the United States has jumped, in other words, atheists without any God, uh, has jumped to somewhere around 36% from, um, in the 1970s, it was around 5%. And it's a, it's a major, majority among the the G the Z the Z generation, uh, the younger generation, it is a majority post baby boomers, and which is what I am. Uh, they are majority. Atheists are majority. Godless people, people that are uh, uh, have no faith at all. Not Muslims. Not Jewish. Not Hindus not Christians, which is the largest grouping in the world. Born-again Christians are a very small percentage. But that's what's going on. The course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Well, Bible-believing Christians, if you know the Bible, you know who that is. That's Satan otherwise known as the God of this age, the adversary of God, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. So Paul is revealing to us that uh, the prince of the power of the air, the devil, uh, he is the spirit that is working in the children of Adam. Sons of disobedience are the children of Adam. We're all born into this. We're born as sons of disobedience, children of, of Adam fallen, separated from God, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh. Now, he's writing principally to, to uh, Gentiles at Ephesus, and here he's talking probably about uh, we Jews also, and we apostles also, uh, conducted ourselves according to the lust, that, that strong desire of the flesh, uh, not the, not the God created desires the flesh, but uh, amplified uh, flesh removed from the restraint of the Spirit of God, uh, uh, dysfunctional flesh. Uh, human beings uh, are disordered. We're we're not properly in because we're not in a proper relationship with God. Uh, we're self centered and. Uh, our being is really disordered from what it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be the children of God, the image of God. We're not. Uh, and when you're not born again, you're, you cannot be the image of God because God is not in you. You can't be the temple of God because God is not in you. But that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be what Christ is. And we will be like him, his people, when he returns to gather us all together. Soon. Soon. Thank God, it's going to be soon. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. <laughs> this, this is getting really crazy here. Uh among whom we all once conducted, or we ourselves also once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. This is that the flesh is what we inherit from Adam and the mind. Uh, this is not the mind of God. And, and we're by nature children of wrath. Nature because we're separated from God, just as the others. doesn't mean we, we were born having committed a particular sin, but we were born without God in us. Children of rebellion, of a rebellious race. The children of Adam. 
But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay, I, I'll keep going if I don't stop right there. But the, the, the point here is in which you uh, once walked according to the the course of this world, the, uh, the, ar the arrangement of this age. According to the prince of power of the air, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. So who's behind all the children of Adam? Who's working in them? The devil. Satan. Let's look at another uh, scripture. This is chapter 8 of John. Please read the whole chapter. It is so rich, so full of the words of our Lord. So much to learn there. Verse 44. You are of your father the devil. Now he's talking to a group of Pharisees that were sort of following him, but then suddenly realized, hey, we don't really like some of the things you're saying. Uh, and the Pharisees turned on him, and we find out that they're one of his principal adversaries, the Pharisees, who are the most religious of the Jews. Uh, they were the ones that, were, that held God's word in highest esteem, sort of, but they added all their traditions to it. And Jesus was not uh, an approver of man-made traditions. No, it didn't come from God. It's not God's word. You are of your father, the devil. Going back to what we just saw in Ephesians, we're all born children of Adam. Even the Jews. Children of disobedience. So here when he says, you are your father. Now, Adam became a, a Satan became the father of rebellion. So this is not in a genetic sense. But he is the father of the rebellion, both among the rebellious angels uh, that fell with him, perhaps a third of the angels followed him in rebellion, and Adam, the human race. And the desires of your father you want to do. Let me, let me bring up a different translation, different translations. You know, I have found that even the New King James is a little bit funky at times because they translate according to their own presuppositions, as everybody does. Um, let me see. Oh, yeah, actually, sometimes the, New King, the King James is more accurate. Uh, at least, I'm, I better make sure. I shouldn't go off on these tangents like this. Uh. Okay, yeah, it's, it's okay. The desires of your father you desire to do, you want to do. Your desires are the same as his. In other words, he's working in you to, both to, to will and to, to do his evil works, his evil desires. It is Satan that is at work in the children of this age, the children of Satan, of, of Adam, to do his desires. This is why we see corporations, you know, think corporations wouldn't be so subject as individuals. You know, the, these people that, that take a, an AR-15 into a shopping mall and sh to murder a bunch of people or into a school uh, or whatever they use. This, this is of Satan. This, this is satanic things. This is not a rational act. It's not in their personal interest. It's not rational. They have no rational uh, motive of vengeance against a bunch of children. Uh, this is this is an irrational act, but it's not irrational for the devil because the devil is he hates humanity, he hates God, 
and uh, he seeks to, to to steal, to kill, and destroy. He just uh, he he. You know the angels of God rejoice in one sinner that repents. The demons rejoice in a sinner going to hell. Dragging the devil wants to drag everything down with him into the abyss into the lake of fire because that's the only thing he can do to God he attacks what God loves because he can't attack God himself so he attacks God's children he tries to destroy Christians you wonder why the, the education system is anti-Christ in this country? Well, this is why. It's not just in America. This is everywhere. All He works in all the children of disobedience. But Satan, because he's not omnipotent, he seeks out centers of power. Not like the United States. That's why the United States has become so satanic and wicked in the world, pushing the agenda of Satan, the alphabet soup agenda, for example, and others against the interest of other people, They're trying to force it on countries. It's just, the United States has become the actual agent of Satan, the current regime is the agent of Satan. And so are these corporations. Why do corporations do this? Why did Anheuser-Busch, why did Bud Light do this? Offend their customers and uh, break faith with their, their shareholders because they're controlled by this. Satan works through them. His, the people in corporate uh, positions, the high positions in corporation, he owns them. He controls them. He manipulates it. He uses human beings to do his will. And the more power they have, the more useful they are. That is why we see these things going on. Okay. He was a murderer from the beginning. This would be the creation. And does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks, he speaks from himself. Now, the New King James says, from his own resources. Resources is added. That's goofy. It speaks from his own. What, what he, from, his, from himself. That is, they... I don't know why they did that. Uh, King James doesn't say that. It says, uh, He speaketh of his own, his own self. I think they added that because he speaketh of his own. Some people might misunderstand that. But out of his own resources, that's, no, out of his own being. His own nature, his own being, what he is. He is by nature. That's why the, the New American Standard says he speaks from his own nature. The actual Greek is, the King James gets the actual Greek, is from his own, what he is, his self, out of himself. For he is a liar and the father of lies. What does that tell you about the current president of the United States and a whole lot of people? Okay, so this is what we're dealing with. Uh, the scripture says, let me, okay, let me go to one last, and then there's something else I want to look up. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse, starting with verse 3, 4, but even if our gospel is veiled, hidden, covered, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age, that's Satan, the God of this time, uh, this particular period of time, has blinded. Now, this is a particular of time from the Garden of Eden until now. 
who do not believe, he's blinded their minds, who do not believe, lest the gospel of the glory of Christ, which is the image of God, who is the image of God, uh, should shine on them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. Side note, that's a good way to, to check a preacher. Does he preach Christ or himself? Is he seeking the interest of Christ or his own interests? His own ideas. Is he preaching? Is he putting forth himself or Christ in the foreground? As John the Baptist said, Christ must increase, but I must decrease. It should be every preacher. More of Christ, less of me. Less of, less of me. Focus on him, not on me. Amen. Absolutely. Amen and amen. So here we find that, that uh, Satan keeps the minds of those who are perishing blinded. He tries to blind them to the truth, to the gospel. So uh, let me go to the one final scripture that came to mind. Uh, it's always a challenge sometimes. This one's pretty easy to figure out what to search on. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Okay, where does it say what? That's not quite what I was thinking of. That's where what I'm saying that sometimes you're, you're, our minds will conflate things. Verses. I know it's Paul's writings. Okay, here, here's what I was thinking of. The other verse is related. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. I think the King James, or the King, yeah, the King James says high places. Uh, but the, the high, but the meaning is, as Young's literal says, heavenly. Two, so that's uh, uh, above us, above the earth. It's the, so it's uh, he, the spiritual powers of Satan and his fallen angels is what we really war against. The uh, fallen sons of Adam are slaves, slaves of sin, slaves of Satan. He controls them as he wills, unless God puts a stop to it, restrains him. God keeps Satan on a leash. He's limited what he can do, and he's not omniscient, he's not omnipresent, he's not uh, um, omnipotent, he's not God. He's a fallen angel, a powerful, perhaps the most powerful of the angels, but uh, doesn't even hold a candle to Christ and to God. He couldn't even defeat Christ when he was in the flesh. All right, so that's uh, see that's what we're really dealing with. That's what I wanted to bring forth. When we see these corporations and governments act irrationally, 
contrary to their own interests and their own purpose in a self-destructive ma destructive manner, which they do, uh, you know, and they, they, they uh, destroy themselves, it's not their interest. It's not the interest of, of these corporations to, to put forward an agenda that offends their customers. It's irrational, except when you realize that the one really in control in the boardroom or in the Oval Office or in the halls of Congress, the Senate, and justice is the god of this age, Satan, Lucifer, the devil, the opponent of God. That's the one who's really calling the shots, and in the United Nations and everywhere. It's only when you have Christians in whom the Spirit of God dwells does he have no power. And he tries to do what he can to us. But we overwhelmingly conquer through Christ. And what is our victory? Our faith. That's what Scripture says. So when you look at this mad, 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 mad world, and you think, what is going on? This lawlessness is reigning from top to bottom. Uh seems like the light has gone out. Well, Satan is having a fit because he knows his time is short. And he's just pulled out all the stops. And it's, if he can't destroy God's people, he will destroy his own children because he doesn't care. He's like the, the regime in Ukraine that doesn't give a tinker's damn about the people of Ukraine, but will, just like Hitler did in Germany, is determined to bring them down in flames with him. Hitler determined at the end when uh, it was obvious that the war was lost, that he would, if, that he, he came to the conclusion the German people had betrayed him, and he get, sent out orders to destroy it all, to destroy Germany, to destroy the German people. And the, fortunately, those orders, uh, people refused to carry them out. But that's what his, he wanted it to go down as a, in a, a, a raging inferno, sort of like a, uh, a Viking funeral, you know, set the ship on fire, except bring everybody down with you. Um, that kind of a thing, just. If, if, if I can't get my way, I'm just going to take everything with me. And that's, that simply was an expression of Satan. <sighs> and that's what we see going on. So understand, when it doesn't make any sense at all, it's not actually totally irrational. There's a reason for this. There's a reason for the United States trying to push the alphabet soup of wickedness in all the world, on other countries. See, they don't believe in democracy. The United States, the government, our government doesn't believe in democracy. It believes that they should have their way everywhere, and they are of the devil. And again, it's not the Democrats, it's the Democrats and Republicans and all the children of Satan. He controls them. He's at work in them. When you understand what the Bible teaches, things do make a little more sense. Jesus said, when you see it, when the devil takes out all the stops, that refers to the, the things on the organ, by the way, the stops on an organ. When he pulls out all the stops, turns up the volume, and is acting totally irrational, like, like he knows, see, he knows the end of his kingdom is at hand. His rule is at end. It, at hand, and just like his uh, protege Hitler or his protege uh, Zelensky, he wants to bring it all down with him. He does not care about his own children. He wants to destroy them. Think about abortion. He wants to destroy his own children. What children are aborted? The children of the wicked, fulfilling God's word. The seed of the, of the wicked shall be cut off. He destroys his own children. 
That's what the devil is. Well, not to mention engaging in instigating human sacrifice and all kinds of bizarre things that go on in this world, that go on in this country, that definitely go on on the Mexican border. Human sacrifice. You won't see that on ABC because he controls them, too. So who is censoring this stuff? It's, who censors the truth? The devil. See, he tries to to blind people to what's going on and especially to blind them to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why he's created this whole education system to blind people to the, to the truth. All the systems of this world are, are controlled by him, including false Christianity and uh, to keep people blinded from the true gospel of Jesus Christ. To, to keep people from being saved. Because he can't stand that. He wants them all to go to hell with him. And he will not rule in hell. He will be humiliated in hell. Scripture, it's in the prophets. It's in the prophets. He'll be brought to, to, uh, to nothingness. All you know, have no power at all be stripped naked before all of humanity, displayed, displayed as a war prize of God. See, this is the one that deceived you. So let's uh, think biblically and remember that Christ is coming. And the signs are being fulfilled. And as Jesus said, look up, for our redemption draws near.